so starting a piece of music for me is one of the most difficult things and I spend a lot of time at the beginning of the process thinking about um, the idea behind the piece. So there's always some sort of idea whether it's a purely musical idea or it's um, something outside of music. Um, and then another, another thing for me is the architecture of the piece. So at the, the beginning of a piece I really need to know about how long the piece is going to be because the musical material always relates to the architecture of the piece. A five minute piece will have very different musical material than a 30 minute piece. And then I'll start sketching and um, trying to create larger sections of music um, and not, not necessarily deal with, you know, three seconds of this, seven seconds of that, but really larger issues, at least at the beginning of the process. So in deciding whether an idea is good, whether to keep material or throw it out, I, I think lots of times that has to do with the context of the piece. Um, just about any idea can, can be developed so that it uh, becomes interesting. Uh, you know, Beethoven had some uh, very earthy ideas that weren't so good on their own, but it's the way he developed them that, that made them so great. Um, but for me, I, you know, I, I try to fit it into the context of the piece. It might be a good idea, but it might not fit within that particular piece, and I might set it aside to use it again or just throw it out completely. Um, so I think in terms of deciding whether something belongs is, again, it's about timing and the context of the piece, but it also has to grab my attention. You know, if, it's, if it doesn't um, hold the audience's attention, um, I think then that can be problematic in itself. At the beginning of the process, it's a lot of sitting, trying to, trying to sit in a silent room and just listen in your mind. Um, and quiet spaces, silent spaces, are really hard to find these days. <laughs> um, but if you can, f if I can find a quiet space, it's it's a lot of just sitting at a desk and sketching. It's only then, after I have some ideas, that I typically bring it, bring those ideas to the piano, and figure out more of the details. Um, because at this point in my life, I think I've. I have my own kind of harmonic language that I feel comfortable with. Um, so when I'm sketching, I'm hearing within that language. And so I can hopefully produce a lot of sketches that I'm not sure about all the details right away, but when I bring it to the piano, that's, that's when I can figure out uh, most of the details. And so it's a lot of back and forth between the desk and the piano more desk at first and more piano later in the process. So the sketching process for me uh, really involves a shorthand I've come up with um, for myself over the years. It's basically a rhythmic and contour um, shorthand where basic rhythms I get down on the page very quickly and the contour of the music, whether it's going upward, downward, what kind of gestural things are happening, and this is all done outside of the musical staff. So I'm not writing actual pitches, I'm just writing uh, shapes, rhythmic shapes, contour shapes. But I try to hear that as much as possible in my head. But uh, the shorthand process, the sketching process, is a way for me to get down a lot of music quickly. And then I can go back and really edit and start thinking about larger issues. Um, so like I said, I'm not just concerned with this three seconds of music or this five seconds. It's, um, it helps me to really plan out the timing of events, which for me is really crucial in the, in the process. So it's usually in the sketching process that I uh, will keep or throw away lots of material. Um, I think, uh, again, when dealing with these larger issues of timing of events, I'm always asking myself, okay, is this, 
is this section too long? Does it go on for too long? Or does this section need to be expanded? Is it too short? So that's where, really where I start um, throwing out, uh, disregarding material, or adding material. Um, and it's, like I said, the timing of events, um, for me, comes about early, fairly early on in the sketching process, but it changes also as the piece begins to uh, take shape. Uh, and I get more and more details. So for me, it's really um, a kind of skeletal structure almost, going from that to a very detailed uh, score. Thinking about the audience, um, yeah, it plays a big part in, in, in what I do. I mean, I want to communicate my musical ideas to the audience. So I try to imagine myself, and it's very hard to do, um, try to imagine yourself as an audience member not knowing what you're about to hear. But of course you're the composer, so of course you know what the piece is. Mm -hmm. But um, trying to put yourself in that uh, mode of hearing this for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully it's interesting enough that the audience wants to come back and hear it a second time or more and that there's richness in hearing it more than once. You know, Copeland said that um, as composers, we never really finish pieces, we simply abandon them. Um, and there's some truth to that. But um, I, think, I think I know when I've filled in all of those details, when it's no longer uh, anywhere near sketch form that I feel comfortable. Um, with all the details, and that I've gone through it. I've actually performed through it, the piece in my mind many times. So there's been performances of the piece, and I've heard it many, many times. Um, you know, conducting through it silently is basically what I do. Um, and that's when I know it's finished. Um, when I'm satisfied with, uh, with the piece as a whole, and again, the timing of events. So I think my influences would include all the music I heard uh, in my youth. You know, I, I was basically a classically trained pianist. I started piano uh, very young, um, later took up a couple other instruments so I could play in the orchestra. I took up percussion instruments, um, but piano was always my main instrument. So all of the classical repertoire that I played, I played in um, you know, jazz groups growing up. I played popular music. Um, so especially rhythmically, all those kinds of things influenced who I became as a composer. And then there were you know, several uh, very important teachers along the way. Um, I'd say Ed Miller and George Crumb and Richard Hoffman were all um, really important mentors uh, for me as a student growing up. Um, but in terms of the you know past composers, um, I would say Messiaen and a lot of the French school, Debussy and Ravel, certainly were very important to me. Um, Copeland and Bernstein, uh, also very important because I played a lot of their music growing up as well. Um, so it's really a mixture of a lot of these things uh, that I think uh, play a part in who I became as a composer.